Hey guys, Dr. Matthew Geller here, founder of Newgrad Autometry. We're super excited to be doing another YouTube Live. We're here with Dr. Jen Lyerly. Say hi, Jen. Hey everybody, nice to see you guys. Yeah, Jen is awesome. Uh, short introduction for her. Uh, Jennifer Lyerly is an optometrist practicing in, at uh, Triangle Vision Optometry in Cary, North Carolina with a focus on specialty contact lenses. She is the founder of Idolatry Blog, an eye care website with a focus on encouraging women's leadership within optometry and was named one of Vision Monday's most influential women in optometry in 2015, huge accomplishment. Uh, in 2016, she co-founded Defocus Media, social media management for a uh, company for private practice ODs and is the co-host of the popular Defocus Media podcast. Uh, in 2011, she graduated from Southern College of Optometry, and in 2017, they honored her as the Young Alumni of the Year. I think there's a ton of great stuff she's leaving out there, and surely a prestigious record uh, to come for you in the future, Jen. Always good to be working with you. We've worked on other projects before, so I'm excited to be doing this one. Yeah, thank you for inviting me for this. I'm really excited, as always, to team up with you and new grads. So. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, let's jump right into it. Today's webinar is sponsored by these awesome folks up here. Here at Degrad Optometry, we try to really work with companies that are definitely sponsoring, or excuse me, not sponsoring, supporting uh, new graduate optometrists. It's not all companies out there that put a lot of that dedication in. And, you know, what Transitions has done with uh, the Change Agent program and supporting young ODs is, is pretty awesome. Uh, on the other side of that, Essilor as well, who's got a close relationship there with Transitions, obviously, um, is, is pretty tremendous when it comes to supporting the young generation. And, I, you know, I think we all believe that that's, that's pretty important for a successful festival for eye care. So uh, big thanks to them. And we'll be talking about some of their products and how their products are pretty integral to running a successful practice and a successful optical dispensary. So yeah, we'll jump right into it. You know, kind of first question here, Jen, first give us a general idea of your background in optometry and your passion for the field. Uh, what's that all about? Yeah, I mean, I guess when you guys were uh, giving me my really great intro, thank you so much for that again. <laughs> kind of saw the short and sweet of it. I'm really interested in growing and expanding our profession. Um, I'm a, a young OD, and I'll be the first one to tell you I do get easily worried about what our future looks like when I see things about online prescriptions and telemedicine really taking over potentially the eye care space and healthcare. And what we are so good at as optometrists really, I think, includes a personal touch and a personal connection with our patients that you just can't establish looking at 50 charts an hour for scrolling through prescriptions. And the power and the art, SEO, we were taught really that writing a prescription is a science and an art. And that art is the part that we can only develop through interpersonal communication. So that's really my passion in optometry is how do we keep that important patient to doctor touch point alive and using products that are very specialized and very high technology and specific to our patients needs and making them uniquely customized to my patients needs is something that really helps me succeed as a doctor and offer my patients the next level of care. Yeah, I like the way you put that, and um, I've actually lectured, lectured you twice, and it's like one of my favorite places to go, and uh, I think they provide just such an awesome education there, and so uh, I can see why they fueled your passion in a big way. Um, I can imagine at your practice that you're busy doing far more than patient exams. What does that look like on a day-to-day -day basis? I mean, I know you're far more than just the, the patient care optometrist. What are you doing on a day-in and day-out basis there, supporting the practice's growth, and you know, what kind of pots do you have your hand in there? Oh my gosh. So, well, I first want to say I am an associate doctor, so I really appreciate the owner, Dr. Clark, Dr. Glupker at Triangle Visions Optometry, where I work, because they've allowed me, even though I don't own the practice, to have such a big personal ownership and leadership within the practice. So I am actually the director of contact lens care. I do a lot of specialty contact lenses and making sure that we've got our rebates and our trial fence sets and we're utilizing our, our best contact lens technology in all the offices. Um, but I also do social media for the company and we're working always on how do we better touch patients and get awareness out for the company. Um, so working on that side of things now too. Um, and then of course I'm writing articles and blogging and doing the podcast and, and then I sleep eventually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there with you. We don't need sleep. That's okay. 
Um, now you were at Transitions Academy recently. I was there maybe three years ago, and I think it was one of the—I still say—it was like one of the best events. I really mean that that I've ever been to. Uh, that was helping me to really, especially focus on what it meant to run a successful and profitable practice. What was this year's event like? What did you guys focus on there? And what is the event for those that don't know? Yeah, I was at Transitions Academy as one time a year. It international. So you've got optometrists coming from all over the world. There's always a big contingent from Canada and South America. Um, so getting to meet people that are practicing in totally different areas and some of them have amazingly successful practices. But it's also a mix. One of the few places that you can go to for training that you have corporate optometry, private practice optometry, um, people with solo practices and people with hundreds of practices all in the same place sharing their best practices and uh, advice. So the other great thing about Transist Academy is there is a huge contingent of young doctors and young leaders there. And there's probably more of a focus there on the next generation of leaders um, than any other conference that I've been to that was, you know, across all age demographics. So you mentioned earlier the change agent program. This is something that Transitions as a brand has done to let young doctors be spokespersons and brand ambassadors for the company. And at Academy, you attend classes to learn about the technology, but also stuff about education on how to better improve your social media, how to talk to patients and patient communication strategy, um, and how to improve profitability in your optical. So it's a full-fledged grow your practice sort of uh, Academy to attend. And it's uh, free, you can register online, which is great. <laughs> Ah, I actually didn't know that. Um, what, you know, so I remember leaving that and coming back and just like kicking major butt in practice, especially when it came down to prescribing uh, doctor driven dispensing and things like that. So, I mean, you know, you go to a conference like that. What are some of your just overall top optical tips, the things that you're doing to really convert patients to getting the, you know, the glasses that they need or the products that they need? Do you have like a certain philosophy on the way all that works? Is it more in the chair done? Is it more of your opticians doing the work? How do you make all the gears turn in a successful practice like that? I think all of us know that doctor driven dispensing is the key to success. We have to prescribe from the chair and not just assume that, oh, it's glasses, my optician's going to take care of it. Because we're the person that's made the connection with the patient. And we're the one seen as the expert. Now, my optician is also an expert, but it's our relationship when we're talking with the patient about what I think is going to best serve their needs and what I'm prescribing for the patient that gives the optician that authority that it doesn't sound like a sales tactic or an upsell. This is the prescribed lens. So um, I'm not going to take credit for this because the person who best taught me and best educated how to do this right, his name is Dr. James Ban. He owns a private practice. Um, he told me, just keep things simple. When you're writing a prescription for a patient, um, he th this is his words, this is how he does things. He's like, I'm recommending three things for you to get your very best vision. We need to protect your light from UV exposure so that you're protected against UV damage from sunlight, things like that. We need to protect your eyes from glare because glare is going to destroy your quality of vision. Oncoming headlights, they're from your computer screen. It's going to take this great prescription and ruin it if you've got glare blinding you in your eyes. And we need to protect your eyes from changing light levels. When you're in dim lighting, it can be very difficult to see. When you're in bright lighting, it can kind of blind you from what you're looking at. If we're doing these things, how do you feel like you're going to see in these glasses? And he asks that question to the patient. And it, it, that question asking, instead of me telling you, the patient's already bought in, like, oh, I'm going to see really well. And he's like, yes, you are. You're going to see the best that you can see. And that verbal buy-in, he's extremely successful with anti-glare coatings and transitions and, and second pair of sunglass cells, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Why is it so hard to keep things simple sometimes? I know. It's like you really need to hear someone reiterate uh, you know, a process that like as ODs we can do day in and day out all day long. Um, and so that's refreshing. Uh, I think that a lot of people tuning in actually want to hear more about those tips. Any other tips that you have, you know, chair side? I know that's that's one that maybe uh, takes a good part of, of what you're doing, but is there anything else that, you know, dealing with uh, patients who want to stay within their plan or whatever that might be, anything else that you use on a regular basis as a tip to make sure patients are getting what they need? Yeah, my advice, this, one other tip that I'll do is 
you prescribe the things that you want your patient to have. In our particular EHR system, we have a tab button where I can just check the things I want on my prescription. So I'll recommend Trivex as my best material and the very best anti-reflective coating and transitions on, on, on the lenses. So my optician won't talk to the patient about that anymore. We've already talked about it in the handoff and in the exam room. Um, and just works up the entire lens package and gives the patient the, the price, frame and lenses total. Doesn't say anything. Mm -hmm. If the patient then is like, oh, that's more expensive than I thought it would be, like, what does my plan cover? Then my optician will say, like, what do you want to, you know, take off, basically? Like, this would be the very best, but if you want to make some sacrifices, if you want to cut down from your best vision, then we can, you know, where do you want to cut from? That tells the patient right away, like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to ruin these glasses like by doing this. So I think always present the very best options and then make sure the patient knows we can cut from this, but it's not going to be as good. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's an interesting way to do it. I can imagine, you know, uh, especially when they understand it's a it's it's a real need and the benefits that it provides to them. Um, a lot of people are seeing glasses, of course, as something fashionable as well. And so when you get into perhaps a bit of the vanity, hey, removing this is going to result in people not being able to see her eyes clearly and whatever that might be, finding those things that I guess mean a lot to the patient is something they wouldn't want to remove and therefore helping you to close that sale. Yeah. Um, what, what a you know, high level overview of, of the Transitions product offering. Um, you know, I want this to, to really convey, I guess, guess where the profession has come and the products that we can offer patients. I think a lot of docs know out there, but what's your spin on it? I mean, let's talk about Signature 7 Extra Active and Vantage. You know, what are the core tenets of these lenses for those who don't know, very simply, but also what are you doing and how are you using them in your practice? Take your time on this one. Okay. Yeah, that was like the loaded question. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, I kind of just want to start out by saying, how do I use transitions in my practice? I, before I went to academy, I thought I knew everything I knew about transitions and I presented it as, oh, do you want your glasses turned into sunglasses? Because in my mind, that's what it was. I realize now after having education to explain to me why that's a really stupid thing to say, that that's the worst way to present transitions. It really presents them as something that it's only for people who don't want sunglasses or that it's going to be the same as sunglasses, which neither is true. I mean, what is true is that they're 100% UV protective in all versions and all iterations of transitions, but they are not sunglasses, nor are they a sunglasses replacement. You know, sunglasses are fully dark, no matter the ambient light levels, they're fully polarized. They're going to give you amazing vision under that full sun sort of situation or that full glare situation. If you're surfing in Hawaii or whatever and you've got overhead and water glare, you're going to want sunglasses on that are polarized, not transitions, okay? Transitions mm -hmm. are an improvement to your clear glasses. <laughs> They're an upgrade. They're an auto-adjusting, and this is what I tell my patients, do you want your glasses to automatically adjust to changing light levels? Okay, so we think about it, our headlights on our car. Um, Mine is kind of old school, I need to upgrade, but many people have the uh, headlights that automatically pop on when it starts getting dark outside and you don't even have to tell them to do that. It's like a smart car. <laughs> They're smart lenses. They automatically change to the tint when, as soon as you step into a much brighter situation. So that's how I relate them and I think it makes a lot more sense and the patient understands and appreciates what it can do a lot better. Um, Half of what we're doing on a daily basis is communication. How do we communicate the essence of something to someone who's anxious in the chair, who's got something to do after this visit? And so, so much, I think, of, of this interaction is communication. And if you don't have the communication down, you're standing on quicksand. Absolutely. Um, and it's all about setting patient expectations. This is no different than us prescribing multifocal contact lenses. If I present a product that is going to do something that it doesn't actually do, like, oh, these glasses turn into your full sunglasses with polarization, that's, that's setting them up to think, oh, these, this product doesn't work. So I think most of the time people say, my patients didn't like the transitions, it's because they were misrepresented for what they are. Um, so it's kind of falls back on us as usual. <laughs> Always does indeed. What about the different lines? I mean, how are you using Signature 7 Extra Active and Vantage? 
So signature seven is kind of your bread and butter transitions. It's fully clear indoors. So I'm actually wearing it right now and probably nobody could tell. I hope that I was wearing transitions because I did this on purpose. Um, <laughs> so it's the one that I would prescribe for people who want totally clear indoor glasses and for them to auto tin outside. Um, Transitions Vantage is a little bit, it is also fully clear indoors, but when it tends to darken outside, it has what they call variable polarization. This is not the same thing as full polarization that you think of with a pair of sunglasses, but it does give that extra sharpness of a polarized vision effect for people that really love polarized sunglasses. So um, the one that we all talk about and really love that turns dark in your car, that fully darkens behind the car windshield is Transitions Extra Active. Um, it does have a very slight tint indoors, but I tell you when I wear it, my patients don't tell that they're, they're tinted either. So um, I think the best way to show patients is Transitions is great about giving you those samples. You'll be able to see besides Signature 7, that's really clear that yes, there's a very faint tint in the extra active, but it's not like they're walking around with dark glasses inside when it's clear. Right. It clears really well. Now with blue light being a hot topic, is is transitions is this part of your conversation blue light when you're talking about transitions you know chair side absolutely you know it's patients almost nowadays without uh, question are bringing up computer eye strain and computer fatigue in the exam room i'll have that as the reason for visit <laughs> more often than not as my chief complaint now with my average patient so blue light is a natural conversation to be having because so many of our patients are experiencing end of day eye strain and fatigue what I really like about transitions is the blue light protection is built in. It's not an added coating or anything that you have to put in there. Um, transition signature seven indoors is 20% blue blocker. Extra active is at least 34% blue blocker indoors. But of course, the biggest source of blue light is the sun. So that's your most damaging. Um, and they're 100% UV protective and blue light blocking outdoors, of course, to eh, over 85% sort of thing. Um, if it sure. was fully really blue blocking, they would be yellow. So <laughs> when sometimes right. people ask like, why don't we block 100%? Like you wouldn't be able to see the color blue, which probably people would not like. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to alter the color perception for sure. That's an important piece of this. Um, let's, so let's do like a little, I'm a patient. I'm a 55 year old male and everything is healthy, but, um, you know, I, I, uh, I say to you, I wore transitions, but, uh, you know, it was around the, it was around my grandpa's transitions around that time. And I didn't like them because they took forever to change. And, you know, even beyond that, I, I just need something to help me with glare, but I drive two hours each day, you know, in minimum in the car. And I, you know, they don't change behind the windshields. What are you prescribing me? Yeah. I mean, Obviously, that's a very clear, this is an extra active patient for sure. Extra active darkens really quickly and really fully when it darkens. So you're never going to have someone with extra active. I mean, I can't imagine that said it doesn't get dark fast enough. It's within milliseconds. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously it fully darkens behind the car windshield, which is great. So that is a, a clear extra active patient. If they like really dark glasses, then I'd say go gray. If I personally like the brown, um, which has got just a, like a little bit friendlier tint if they're driving really early in the morning or late into the evening when you've got that setting or, or mid light levels, brown, just like brown sunglasses, it's a little bit better contrast for those situations. What are you doing with the pediatric population? Is that more of a signature seven type of lens? I just remember having enormous success when it came to transitions and not necessarily peds, but just younger patients where uh, the parents were a little bit hypercritical of the child's eye health. Uh, I think that's an opportune, you know, type of patient. Is that, is that the case? Oh, absolutely. I think your, your bread and butter, your easiest transitions prescription is kids because parents understand and care about their children's eye health and the blue blocking aspect of it really plays a lot into this too, because I'll have parents that I'm doing their eye exam on, they've got their four-year-old sitting in the room and they have a cell phone or a tablet that they're entertaining themselves with. And invariably mom asks, like, is that bad for them? Like, should they be on that so much? And we can start talking about blue light. Um, and so it's natural to want to put a blue blocker on a child's prescription. The other great thing, you know how it's really popular for pediatrics right now is for them to wear sports frames as their right. eye helmets. 
uh, all my kids want to wear rec specs as their like full-time pair and those look really good tinted so there's a bit of a fashion aspect for it for kids too yeah i, I just remember being just i would be happy because the patient or the parent rather would be much more amenable and understand the value because it was about their child. Right. And I found it more difficult to convince some of my older generations of patients who, who tend to always think back to what transitions used to be like. Mm -hmm. What do you feel about like the iterative nature of the R&D there? Is it, is it developing? I mean, you've probably seen, you know, at least a generation or so of transitions come out. What do you think, uh, you know, how do you feel about the product's longevity? How old do you think I am? <laughs> well, I saw the previous generation before <laughs> six or seven, so, and you graduated two years before me, so you're in that bucket. <laughs> no, so I, this comes up a lot, but like, I can't remember when transitions was apparently really terrible. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, it does sometimes come up in the office where like, oh, you know, like that was those old things, like they really didn't turn or they really didn't darken. I think that's where having a sample pair made up in your office really wins. And what I like to do, separate from having even just the little sample lenses, like get a pair, this is a little insider tip, get a pair of gold aviators from your frame board and make them up in Plano with uh, graphite green transitions, okay? They, one, they look really stylish, of course, and they're going to look great when they're green with the gold frame, but just tell the patient, oh, put these on and step outside. Hopefully they're contact lens wear, so they're going to be able to see, okay? Mm -hmm. It'll immediately blow them away, and then when they come back indoors and see themselves in the mirror with those green tinted gold aviators, they're going to be like, man, those look good. So that totally blows out of the water any like, oh, this is going to make me feel old or it sounds old. If you're putting it in a fashion forward frame with a really cool funky tint, I think that's where graphite green really shines because it takes away that old school feel of transitions. If you've got a patient that's a little bit worried, it's for old people. Right, exactly, exactly. And then you can speak, of course, about you know the, the advancements. I know, um, I don't know if you know off the top of your head overall how quickly lenses are changing from inside to outside or uh, the immediacy of that. Do you know some of those numbers? Oh, I don't know the exact seconds, but it's within fractions of a second. Okay, it's not okay. going to take but you will not be able to count as fast as it darkens when you step outside. Got um, it. So it's pretty immediate and, you, and pretty it gradually. Immediate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah. Um, so, so overall, right. So settings for seven is fully clear indoors, extra active darkens fully behind the wheel. Vantage has the variable polarization for outdoor uh, activity and, you know, people who are on the water or things like that. Um, any other use cases that you find useful when prescribing them? Um, so, I am maybe a little bit of like a cowgirl when it comes to transitions. I think maybe some of my ideas you'll find to be sort of strange, but they do make sense when it comes down to it. Um, my bread and brother transitions prescription right now is for computer eye strain and glare complaints. I know that sounds weird because transitions is for darkening outside, but the innate blue blocker potential um, really cuts down on that light sensitivity and glare issues that my computer users or people that are under LED lights in their workspace are having. And I love Extractive because that very slight tint, doesn't leave the glasses tinted looking, but there is that very slight tint, is a natural, almost like dimmer slip, just a little bit of protection for them under that environment. Mm -hmm. um, in, in my personal opinion, some blue blocker AR coatings do tend to have a lot of color distortion on them because of the spectrum and blue that they're blocking. And I'll have my computer users sometimes complain about that, especially if they're in graphic design um, where it skews their color perception a little too much. If you do the gray tint on transitions, like, uh, extra active, it's a neutral density filter. So it's, it's dimming everything at the same wavelength. So you have no color distortion, um, which is a really nice feature for that patient. Got it. Now, impact on the optical, impact on the practice, has this, mo this way of prescribing, this philosophy of prescribing, and of course the product you're prescribing, has that have a positive, has that have, has that had a positive effect on your practice, on patient uh, retention, on patient referrals, all those important metrics that help build a practice? Absolutely. Well, I mean, just to break it down simply, of course, transitions, ads, extra dollars to your, your frame and lens cell. Um, for most people, you're looking at around $90 reimbursement on transitions through insurance stuff. So 
that's a, a really good income builder for you. People that get transitions, I think I'm trying to remember the exact number, but I know it's over 85% of them intend to repurchase. I think it's in the 90%. So it does build a very loyal customer um, that they're going to want transitions in every pair of glasses they're ever. The satisfaction is really high. I know they um, recent report that came out, it's higher than the satisfaction on the Apple iPad. So really? <laughs> that's pretty good numbers for transitions. Um, My iPad is sitting at home and I could have used it today, but I didn't and it is a good device. So, so that's pretty competitive right there. <laughs> pretty competitive. Um, and then the, the other thing about it, I think that is the main key is you taking the time to custom design a pair of glasses for a patient. I'm making your glasses have this, this, this because of your specific needs. That is something that's a practice loyalty builder. I'm prescribing you a pair of glasses that's custom designed for you with your specific complaints. No, you won't be able to have this exact same pair of glasses online. They don't, aren't capable of having this customization that I've made for you. Um, and giving the, the patient a pair of glasses with that sort of meaning behind it, I think is a really good practice generator for you. I feel like that's such a good tip. I mean, we're all doing this type of practice, but how many ODs are actually taking the time to talk about that? I never actually said that. That's like a really, really good tip, I think, overall. And it's once again, it goes back to communication. What's the one thing that you can say that's going to make that big difference in that patient coming back or their perception of the value you're providing them? I mean, that's so true. There's nothing, I'm writing normal prescriptions just like everybody else, all of you are doing, but saying the words, I've custom designed these lenses for you, that means something different to the patient, even though my exam is the exact same exam you guys are giving. Right, right, of course. Got it. All right. Myths about transitions. You just wrote an amazing article on it. I think is the last, wow, it was published on July 10th. It's only been out for a couple of days, almost 3000 visitors on that and shared oh, wow. 77 times. Of course, Jen, you're crushing it. That's what I always tell you. Um, <laughs> it's super, super successful. And it was about debunking myths on transitions. So let's go over four myths you talked about here. Um, number one, it was, I'll lead it up. Uh, the okay. transitions lenses aren't fully clear indoors. I think we talked about this, but refer to this as from the standpoint of why this is seen as a myth and what people are saying. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's always the fear, right? Especially when you have a younger patient. Oh, I don't want my, my glasses to look dark inside that. That seems like something like a, an 80 year old would wear after cataract surgery. Right. Um, and the best way to debunk that myth, we all know it's not true. I mean, signature seven is fully clear indoors is, for, I always say, I'm wearing them right now, you know, and they're, my patients will be like, oh my gosh, you, right now you are? And I was like, yeah, they're totally clear, right? Mm -hmm. um, so like any great technology, it always helps that the doctor is the avid spokesperson and is physically wearing it. So, <laughs> yep. Yeah, that was really critical. I think um, I did that a lot with, uh, we were doing a lot of Crizal Provencia and I used to have those right next to me. And my yeah. transition signature seven also, except my prescription changed. So I'm not wearing that. I'm a hyper -ope with like nothing. So my prescription's a bit of an excuse just to wear glasses. Uh, <laughs> myth number two, uh, the lenses cannot turn dark in the car. Talk about this and specific lenses that help with this. Yeah. So, I mean, there's your extra active, right? I can personally speak from my experience because I own extra active in my lenses fully dark and behind the car windshield. I'm very happy driving in them. And that's what I would tell my patients. Um, there's another great example though of where, okay, you've got a pair of glasses that you have made up. If you want even to let them experience it, you can. But Transitions personally does a really great thing. And let's it, it's a no fault trial. If you get Transitions in your lenses and you're not happy with them, Transitions that is, as a company guarantees the product and it will, they'll refund you the difference. So there's never really? any law. Yeah. SLR stands behind that product and, and Transitions does too. So I'll tell my patients, you know, if you are dissatisfied, let us know. I mean, we have a 30 day return policy. So really takes off any sort of worry there. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I have a pair of glasses made up so they can walk out to the car if they want to and put them on and like prove them to themselves. I think having a simple pair made up really helps. Yeah, wow. I didn't, uh, I forget the simple, you know, and, and great, it's not even marketing, but it is this kind of, uh, this way to say we're confident, we're confident in what we've made. And, um, 
you know, there, there's a few companies that do that with products that, that once they're returned, they're, they're, you know, you can't do much with those lenses after perhaps. And uh, to stand by that is pretty critical, I think. Uh, and, and if the satisfaction is greater than that of the iPad and Apple product, I think that says a lot. Um, Myth number three, transitions lenses can replace sunglasses. Tell me about this one. So here's it, both transitions and sunglasses are 100% UV blocking, but transitions are not sunglasses. And the reason I make that distinction is sunglasses, like we said, they're, they've got that constant dark tint. They're not going anywhere. They're not changing anywhere. So if you wore your transitions in a situation where like on the beach all day and pop, you know, pop up storms are coming by and you've got this really bright light and this really great glare. Yeah. And especially to feel like my sunglasses were a little bit more comfortable for me then it's just, it, these are made for your everyday wear of lenses. I wouldn't actively compare them with sunglasses level of glare protection and vision because they're not a full polarized tint lens. Um, also, if you think about your clear ophthalmics versus a pair of sunglasses, like typically your sunglasses are a little larger. They do have more of a wrap. So you're going to be getting that side protection and that fuller eyelid protection unless you wear crazy oversized aviators as your clear pair like I do. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that's that's a different amount of coverage. The wrap is a good wind protection coverage. So I think of my transitions as an improvement to my regular clear pair of glasses, my everyday ophthalmics and my sunglasses as something different. Got it. And I think this is the biggest myth right here. And I think one that most people may encounter most, but myth number four, transitions lenses are ideal for the older population only. Um, and, and let's go into that a little bit deeper once you talk briefly about it, like you did with the others. Yeah. Um, obviously, and they're great for everyone. That's what I would say. We talked already about how excellent they are for pediatric and children. Okay. Um, we talked about, you know, older generations love the convenience and ease of them, but I'm 32. I love the convenience and ease of them. And besides the computer strain, digital eye fatigue, blue light issues that we talked about, that's really a, a my generation and, you know, teenage to 40 some year old for sure and older. I mean, 62 year olds, 75% of them on Facebook now. So um, we, all of us have blue light issues in our daily life that cause eye strain and end of day fatigue. Um, the other thing that I like talking to my female patients about, I don't know if this comes up with you when you're seeing patients at all, but women are really concerned about wrinkles and under eye circles and bags. And I tell my patients, like, one of the reasons I wear transitions is because think about every time you step outside, walk to your car to get something, you go out to lunch, you go get the mail. If you don't have, remember to constantly put on your sunglasses, like, that's squinting, okay? That momentary mm -hmm. few seconds when you enter light, that's squinting. Now, add up those few seconds that happen, you know, multiple times during your day over the course of five or ten years. Cranium that you can invest in. So squinting is your enemy and make your glasses auto squint. And so I do yep. a lot of transitions for women because of this. And it's an easy message to connect. I like that. I like that. The, the audio cut out for a second there, but you, I think you said there's no cream you can invest in that would, that would fix that, right? This is my, the best wrinkle cream money can buy. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, there's a question here from someone on YouTube. And obviously you guys can uh, comment to the right side of the player. Maybe it's there, maybe it's there, I'm not sure. Um, they say, I've heard a myth that transitions eventually in the long run changes the color of the lens to a little yellow tint, which make your lens look funny and not as, the, not as good as when you uh, originally bought them. Um, I believe personally that's one of like really some of the older pairs potentially yeah. and uh, pairs that are, uh, that are abused in some way, but speak on that, you know better than me. No, I, I agree. I think that's an older generation transitions. I've never seen that happen with Signature 7 or with any of the newer generation lenses. Um, yeah, I, maybe with the older generation, if it was exposed to high heat temperatures or things like that. But I've, I've never, ever seen a, from a pair of glasses sold in our optical, a patient bring back with that issue. Got it. Got it. Thanks for the question to that individual. Um, you know, this is, it's it fascinates me that, uh, that you've got this passion around this and, you know, certainly a message to convey. And um, I like that. Just a side note, sidebar. <laughs> um, so 
transitions is based on some really interesting science and a science that's often misunderstood. Uh, tell us how the lenses work so that ODs can better explain it to their patients. Uh, there, you know, I think there's a couple of core pillars right to their functioning. Tell us about those. So I think it's good to be able to explain this to a patient because there are a few things that are just like the principles of physics that transitions lenses have to abide by that sometimes patients in our world of like instant satisfaction can get frustrated by. So if we think about just general chemistry reaction, there's always one process, like one direction within a process that takes less energy and is faster. And if you move the process in the opposite direction, it's like going uphill. It requires more energy and more input. So for transitions, the darkening is the really fast, easy. The process is set up for the bonds to form really quickly as soon as they're uh, exposed to UV light. Now the unbreaking of the bonds and the turning back to clear, that's the uphill process. So they darken extremely fast, but extra active, for example, to fully clear indoors, it could take a few minutes to do that especially if you're in a room with a lot of open windows and things like that, where there's still some UV getting in. So like in the optical, if it's really well lit, sometimes I linger sort of transitions if I've sat outside. Um, so just think of that though as basic chemistry. It's a true of all processes. I usually describe this to my patients like uh, an ice cube for me. Under the right temperature, water freezes really fast and becomes an ice cube. But if you sit it out and you let it melt, the melting is slow. So it's the exact same idea and trying to fix that like t transitions, innovating the technology to make it immediately clear back is going to take basically breaking some physical laws that we know of right now. That's really cool. I like the way you put all that. Super helpful to understand it. Hopefully it helps my patients get less frustrated that it doesn't immediately clear. Like, <laughs> <laughs> What are some of the other core tenants here? I, I like the overall, uh, the overall, kind of understanding of that this is a concept that does rely on one of the laws of physics or several of the laws of physics. So temperature is another one, right? If you think about same idea, ice will freeze faster if it's colder, <laughs> it'll melt faster if it's hotter. The transitions breaking and, and making of changes in molecules bonding is temperature dependent. So in, in higher heat temperatures, um, transitions is a little bit fat or a little bit slower in colder temperatures, the change happens a lot faster. So I will sometimes have, I mean, I'm in North Carolina, it is really hot here. Um, and if you leave your sun or your glasses in the car and it's like a hundred and some degrees in there, and then you're like, well, why are my transitions not fully darkening anymore? I sometimes tell them like, put them in the fridge for 15 minutes. <laughs> leave them in the heat and expect them to have the same speed of, of transitioning. They like colder temperatures. So people that live in Alaska probably have super fast transitions. Ooh, there's a market there. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so just remind patients that if you're in a, a warmer climate and they're telling you they're not changing as fast now that it's July, like, oh, you know, it, it sometimes needs a little bit of cool temperature, needs a little air conditioning to speed itself back up. But I think this Got is it. less of an issue with the newer generation lenses too. I haven't had as many people complain about that recently. Hmm. Cool. What about the other myths, or not myths, uh, the other you know, pieces of the science here, uh, polarization, things like that? So with polarization, this is one where like, I'm not the best at explaining, like what is variable polarization versus <laughs> right, full polarization? I think the big take home so that when you're talking to patients, this doesn't get way too compounded is that it's not a full polarized, like a polarized pair of sunglasses. Variable polarization means that you're getting some polarized effect. Um, but if you're someone who likes extremely, you know, intense polarized sunglasses sort of thing, you wouldn't expect the exact same level of polarizations in your vantage. So the polarization only kicks in when it's activated. Um, so it's not polarized when it's clear indoors. And that's another thing so, to sort of remind the patient of. It's not like they're wearing polarized clear glasses. It's a variable. Right. It changes to it. Got it. And so, yeah, I think that's, in a way, that's um, a bit of a selling point, of course, or a point that helps the patient to better understand this because uh, you know, clear glasses indoors on devices that would affect, uh, potentially if you're sitting by a high computer, yeah. you know, not being able to see that as clearly versus when you need it outside in the sun. 
And that's a bit of an advantage. You know, some people really struggle with their devices through polarized lens. And with the variable polarization, it'll be a little less of effect. So it makes it a little easier to use, you know, your cell phone or a digital screen through the glasses. And obviously, like you said, if they were like that when they were clear, you're going to really struggle with your devices indoors. Got it. And so the last piece is really the blue locking, blue blocking side of things, which we went over pretty in depth. But I guess overall here, we're talking about the ability for this lens to filter out that wavelength, therefore protecting the retina. Is there anything else you know, important on that piece? I think the biggest, most important thing, that, and this is the part that I really like is prescribing this for a blue blocker, is that it does not change the color tint of what you're looking at. So a lot of times when we think about blue blocker coatings, we think about something that's going to skew our color perception. Mm -hmm. um, I love wearing extra active as a blue blocker because I do not get that issue for my patient. Um, so if you have someone who is on the computer all day long, but has been sensitive to any sort of blue blocker coating in their um, anti-reflective coating or complains that the purple tint on their lenses, you know, people thought I had purple. I mean, you've heard these things like people come back and like, why are my glasses purple? Everyone's making fun of me. Uh, so, or when they take pictures, suddenly they have like a pur purple sheen across their face and it's like ruined mm -hmm. all their photos or their selfies. So um, you're getting blue blocker. Definitely selfies. Without that definitely issue. So, definitely this selfies. is an important thing to consider. You know, they, they care about how they look in selfies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so don't prescribe the purple hue if people are going to be sensitive to it. And I think letting them, you know, having that mock-up and letting them see what it looks like. Some people love it. I've had people put up Provincia and they're like, oh, this is amazing. And then other people mm -hmm. put up and be like, oh, it looks weird. Like my color's messed up. Okay, let's not put that on your glasses. We'll blue block yep. it right away. <laughs> yep, that's like, a, that's like such a good, uh, that's a whole different topic we can go so, so deep <laughs> into. That's an area that really fascinates me, especially with the generation and the way that we are stuck to our devices. Um, so word on the street is you're a pretty innovative prescriber. Um, what's bring your innovations to transitions. I mean, where, you know, how are you approaching this with different demographics or different situations? Um, you've told me about you know, things with glare, kids, migraines, go through your list. Anything really yeah. interesting? Well, let's talk about the migraines one a little bit, cause I've got a good story about this. I never thought about prescribing transitions for migraines. And then I had a patient come in and she was, you know, we were doing the whole thing. I was doing my handoff and she goes, Oh, I just want a prescription to go. Um, and I was like, Oh, why is that? And she said, I'm getting these glasses called Therospecs online for my migraines. And I've already, you know, researched it. And that's what I'm going to get. I was like, what in the world are these migraine glasses? So I Googled it. If you guys look it up right now, you're going to laugh like I did. They're <laughs> the ugliest orange, like giant cataract fit over glasses that you can get made. No. And th this woman was really excited about them and she could not wait to get them. And so we were looking at it together and I was showing her, I was like, well, we can make your lenses full time tinted and they wouldn't have to have that, that big frame. Like you could do any frame. We ended up getting her a black fin. So it's super, you know, titanium and really like weight and not going to weigh down and put pressure on her face. Um, but if you think about, you know, a, a tinted lens, what's even better for migraine sufferers? Something that changes the tint darkness as they move to different light levels, the auto tints for them. So this is like the highest technology migraine relief pair of glasses you could give. I would recommend doing extra active. They're probably going to need it. Um, but that light indoor tint is going to take the edge off. And then of course it darkens when they go outside. So this is my go-to. You say you have migraines? For sure, you're going to get this in your lenses at my recommendation. How good does it feel to just like deliver that piece of information and, and like you just feel so good about it? It's like you're not going to have to wear those. You're saving society's like uh, embarrassment one piece at a time or Honestly, one person at a time. I kind of felt like an idiot that I had never thought about it before. <laughs> like, but it took someone bringing me something from the internet to realize that I should prescribe my glasses. Is this a <laughs> Sometimes you just need like someone to slap you with the obvious. Yeah, there's something to say for for finding the unique segmented audience and the problems they're having, and you know, keeping attuned to those problems. It's not, and not every patient's going to come to you and just say, 
you know, uh, I have a problem. It's that my glasses don't change. No, it's your job as the OD to find those unique scenarios. Like I could tell you as, you know, my profession is to sit you know, in this office and do this, this every day at this time of the day, the sun shines in and you know, this is what I need. And, and it's, it's your communication. It's your ability to take a great case history and find those things. Um, to pick up on, on, on how this lens, in particular this lens, can help them. Uh, I guess my other, I, I just really encourage you guys for your digital eye strain, computer user sufferers, to think about transitions as a solution. It seems so counterintuitive, but um, it's got the built-in blue blocker. And what do your computer users constantly tell you? When they go outside, they're so light sensitive that blue light changes your pupillary reaction and your pupillary constriction. So when then you're faced with full sunlight, your, your pupils almost soar because it's been reacting to the blue light from your screen. So they need something that darkens really quickly and changes fast. And most of these are people that like, they don't go outside at all until they go out for lunch. And then they're like, ah, oh, and then they get a migraine. So this is a very common patient population that sure. transitions is kind of ideally made for. Yep. What about uh, medication use um, for light sensitive patients? Well, so we think about all of our dry eye sufferers and we know how many medications cause dry eye as a side effect. Most of those people that suffer from dry eye are extremely light sensitive and they're, it's kind of like, you know, dry eye really activates your corneal nerves. Any stimulation is so painful to you. So whether it's bright light or a little bit of wind or something like that, so it really kind of harkens back to the same idea with your computer users, protect them. Don't let them get exposed to that bright changing light levels where their pupil has to restrict really fast. Putting a, a per, you know, something that blocks before they have time to let their eyes react can really take the edge off some of their dry eye issues. So any medication that you're looking at that you know has dry eye side effects, um, it's gonna have some light sensitivity side effects too. And that's why they complain to you about they can't see clearly driving at night and their eyes are so sensitive. It's all that same spectrum. Got it, got it. Anything on the fashion kind of forward people and how you deal with them? I Not mean, deal, I how you think support everybody them? isn't looking at me and be like, fashion from her? Like, <laughs> <laughs> but personally, <laughs> I think it's really cool. And one of the big trends that I've seen on IRA this year is wearing sunglass styles as your ophthalmics. Um, you've got designers like Coco and Breezy and RBS Eyewear and a lot of these independent eyewear designers that are doing really funky looking glasses that you would think would be sunglasses as your regular clear ophthalmics. So everything's a little bit oversized. There's a lot of brow bars out there. Um, these lenses look really good, clear and tinted. So transitions is kind of a natural segue for that. One kind of cool thing too about transitions when it comes to the fashion side of things, um, if you've got a frame with a lot of different colors in it, you can use the, the different tints to bring out different color hues within the frame. Um, the graphite green is really good at doing that. Um, if you've got like a, a different multicolored tortoise, for example, or things like that. So it gives a little bit more dimension to the color, whereas your usual sunglasses are just, you know, black or brown. Right. So you've got like this fun, funky, more colored version, um, makes the glasses a little bit more independent and unique, interesting, more likely to get people to ask you, tell me about your glasses. What, how'd you, you know, your practice, you joined an existing practice. They probably already were started with transitions. How, how does a practice get started with it if they're not currently doing it or even doing it well, maybe they need support around it. Any tips there? Yeah. I mean, when you are a prior practice, you're going to have reps for all of your companies. So let's say, you know, your transitions rep or your SLR rep, very skilled at getting the education that you need um, to help your staff understand your prescribing techniques and getting you the information that you need to better prescribe. Um, there are a ton of point of purchase materials. I really recommend having, by the way, um, lens print and purchase materials in your optical, not just like Rabian and frame names. Like, let's talk about the lenses. Let's put some, some motivation behind the technology of our lenses and don't have it be really boring. Like have it just as vivid and bright as anything you do for a frame advertisement. And the yeah. materials are really good at that. And you can get all this for free. You can also um, get them online. There's a place to order through the transitions uh, professional website where you can get point of purchase materials direct if you don't have a, a rep established yet. What site is that? Do you know off the top of your head? I could look it up if you don't know. <laughs> I don't know off the top of my head, but I know I on the Facebook page, it's Transitions Lenses Healthy um, 
called Transitions Lenses Healthy Site Professionals. Um, Got it. But I don't think the website is that lengthy. Got it. I'm gonna. I think it's like transitions.com slash professional or something like that. Find it. Yeah. yeah, I remember when we got started, there was a lot of really, you know, just helpful materials that we brought into the practice, just sales aids and things like that. Um, one of the sites you can visit, it looks like, is trade.transitions.com. Point of sale materials, wow. websites and web tools, images, presentations, videos, documents and events. Um, all of this is downloadable, looks like, and very shareable. Um, do, you, do you share anything on social media related to the product? Has that been helpful at all? Well, personally, I think so. So here's the thing. I'm a transitions change agent, and we talked about that program as a, as a social media ambassador. You can share their point of purchase materials, but what I think with all social media connects the best is if you are sharing unique personal things that you or your staff are wearing. So I like posting personal stuff, and then I'll mention the frame that I'm wearing, that my transitions lenses and what color that I've got. And so I'm making, I'm always making my own unique images with my own unique story. And that's the best way to connect on social media. So that's why, you know, you as a doctor need to wear the product, your staff needs to wear the product and have them involved in your social media too, so that it's a constant running story that's personal to your office. I'm shooting this on Instagram right now, even though no one can hear except me. <laughs> You're not wearing transitions, but it counts. Um, yeah, I think the, the it's important to, share often and share your stories. Um, you know, I think the people who are visiting you on a regular basis, who want to see you, who bring their kids to you, they want to know what you're doing. And so that's just like, if we're talking marketing, which let's talk about, let's talk about marketing here. Social marketing, obviously that was a great tip. Get it out there, show that your staff is doing it. What other marketing things are you doing to get the word out there about optical success in general? Um, I think, you know, another really great thing, and this is instead of marketing in online, you know, veering off more into in-store thing, telling a story through everything set up. So at my office at Triangle Visions Optometry, our optician Kevin is excellent at creating a brand story with all of our optical. So he'll have a little setup where we've got all the, the frame let's say where it's state optical, for example. He'll have an iPad running with a video of state eyewear being made and manufactured, really a big poster from state optical about made in America. And the frames are displayed with, you know, some point of purchase materials that really focus on that made in America and that custom designed aspects. So little pieces of fiber and a close up of the number of stars on the side of the frame that are for the state of Illinois. Um, you've got to tell that story visually. And then of course, then when you're looking at the frames with the patient, kind of connect with them on telling the story verbally too. So don't miss out on opportunities to tell the story of the brand and not just the name of the brand. Um, Love it. Yeah. We actually have, if anyone is curious, on newgradoptometry.com. I believe it's one of the articles on the homepage, if not just Google, New Grad Optometry Transitions Myths. We have an infographic you can download that talks about the three different types of transitions lenses, and this is something that you can share uh, with patients on your social media and will help to, uh, to get some folks in your office, of course. So bring up that one. Um, we've got just a couple minutes left. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, you guys are probably going to see some new transitions commercials coming out too. The new kind of celebrity spokesperson is Jamie Chung, who's really big in the fashion and street style scene. So I haven't seen her commercial yet, but I'm pretty excited because that's going to be, I think, a really good connection with a younger audience. I'm um, trying to get that more fashion forward aspect about transitions out there. So um, when you've got a social media star and a, or a celebrity wearing the products, they've been doing a great job of getting young brand ambassadors like that. But this is kind of taking it to the next level when she's going to be in her commercial. Yeah, it's really difficult to do that level of marketing, um, but it does make a difference. And, you know, I think in this case, we're trying to raise awareness for patients to be more comfortable and have healthier sight and healthier vision. Um, and so, you know, I commend them for that. It makes it so much easier for our jobs as optometrists to do what we need to do and get that point across when there's commercials about it, radio ads, podcast ads, whatever that might be. Um, and, you know, we're one little slice of that right here today. But, 
but it is it does make it much easier for patients to come to you rather than you needing to go to them all the time uh, with the message. Well, the easiest transition sale is a person who comes in already knowing they want it. So um, yep. that always helps. And our generation is really bad about we oftentimes make for a very difficult patient because we've usually researched what we plan on getting before we come in, whether it's glasses, lenses, or contact lens. We've like, oh, we've already Googled it and we picked out we need to be prescribed, yada, yada, yada today. And if the doctor says something different, it's like, oh, that's not what I was planning on getting. So uh -huh. planning the seed before the patient ever comes in to your office, sometimes you, you know, the, by the time you're seeing them, it's already too late. They've already made their purchasing decisions. So anything companies are doing to reach patients first is going to help us so much. Got it. Got it. Well, I don't want to, you know, we, we've got just a couple minutes here. And, and of course, I want you to be able to, uh, to add in any final tips. So, so let's go ahead and do that. And then, you know, we'll make sure people can contact you, other optometrists can contact you, or even patients who may be in your area who are uh, curious to tap into your expertise. Um, but any other kind of thoughts on this? You know, we went over science, we went over the myths, we went over how you're succeeding with merchandising, marketing, um, that type of stuff. Do you have kind of like an overall resounding message or um, philosophy that helps you excel with this type of thing that maybe other ODs can benefit from? I really think that the key to success on all of these things is if you believe that the product is helping the patient with their health, with their vision, with their clarity, you're going to stand behind the product and be a spokesperson for it. So make sure that you're wearing the products that you prescribe so you can personally form opinions on them and speak from your heart about it. Always prescribe in the best interest of the patient and don't, you know, there's no reason to examine pocket busters things like that. Like, oh, they're going to think transitions are dumb. Like if you think, that it's going to give them their best vision and solve their complaints, then that's the recommendation you need to be making. Um, and that goes with glare coatings or titanium frames instead of plastic. Like we're the experts. Let your opinion and your recommendation be what guides the patient. If they put on have migraines and they're putting on big old chunky, heavy plastic frames, you need to go over there and be like, this is really not going to be the best for you. I'd recommend this. And mm -hmm believe in yourself as the expert on this. Yeah, I like that. I like that. It's really simple and um, hits an emotional chord as well. So it's important to have that. Um, so if you guys need to contact me, I think the best way is newgradoptometry.com. Just go to the contact page. I'm at Matthew Geller OD on Twitter. Um, and those are probably the best ways. LinkedIn, I'm there as well. And Jen, how about you? Ways that folks can contact you. Um, I am available a couple of different ways on um, social media. It's idolatry um, and you can reach me on the website or on the blog or on the podcast email for defocus media. Um, but my email address, if you want my personal email address, it's J E Lyerly. That's L Y E R L Y at gmail.com. Um, but I'm happy to answer anything on Facebook or Instagram or wherever you want to send me a message. Yeah, thanks for that. Well, I, I really appreciate you coming on and um, obviously a big thanks to Transitions for, for sponsoring this and giving us the, the time and the bandwidth to, uh, to get this message out there, which you and I are both super passionate about. Um, and so, so I, I like that it's a natural fit, but a big thanks to them. And, and Jen, thanks for taking the time. I know you're super busy and I'm sure this time next year, it'll be even more busy. You're a natural crusher. I believe that. And, uh, and um, we'll go ahead and, and uh, stop the broadcast now. You guys can catch us again on YouTube Lives all the time. We're trying to do at least one a month. Um, we'll be at Vision Expo in September, Vision Expo West in September, doing live panel talks. Jen, you won't be there. I'm kind Sorry, of mad at you. It's homecoming, though. So if anybody wants to come out to Memphis, I'd love to see you there. That sounds pretty fun. That's I want to go to Iceland. You were just in Iceland. I want oh, to go there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but thanks. In Memphis in September, I can guarantee. <laughs> there you go. All right, um, Jen. I'll stay on with you after, but I'll stop it now. Thanks everyone for watching. Much appreciated. Bye.